So when you step out on the streets of African cities, whether you're taking a walk or you're taking a ride around town or you're just touring town, um, some names are going to occur over and over, either on billboards, street signs, shop fronts, and every major business district. And those names will be either Infinix, Techno, or Itel. Now, in case you're not familiar with what Infinix, Techno, or Itel are, Infinix, Techno, and Itel are the largest mobile phone selling brand in Africa as we speak, controlling over 40% of the market, outbeating Samsung, Huawei, Apple, Oppo, and the major players in the world stage. So our mission today is we're going to find out how Infinix, Techno, and ITEL became Africa's highest selling mobile phone brand. What did they do right to capture the heart of the people? What did they do that Samsung and the other big players didn't do? All right. Hey, what is up fam? Great to have you back. Thank you so much for stopping by again today, all right? So in case you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And in case you've been, you've been a regular follower of this channel, please keep doing that and keep sharing my videos with your friends, all right? It's because of people like you that have been doing what I do. And I sure appreciate your help, okay? So Africa is the second largest continent in the world with over 1.3 billion people and counting. And like every other continent in the world, our appetite for technology has grown drastically in the last decade that we have come so much to rely on technology now, be it from fast cars to private jets, um, high flying helicopters, and of course, even to thousand dollar mobile phones. We spend money on these things now and we have come so much to make them a part of our daily lives. Before we go ahead, let's look at some quick statistics here. Now, over half of the world's population of 4 billion is now online. In Africa, people have more access to mobile phones than they have to electricity and clean water. The growth in internet users in Africa has been driven by more affordable smartphones and more affordable mobile data plans. The number of internet users in Mali alone has increased almost six times since January of 2017. The number of internet users in Benin, Sierra Leone, Niger, Mozambique has more than doubled over the past year too. More than 3 billion people around the world now use social media and 9 out of 10 of these people access these platforms via their mobile devices. In 2002, roughly 1 in 10 owned a mobile phone in Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya and Ghana. And today, there are more cell phones in Nigeria and South Africa as there are in the United States of America. Now, at the end of 2016, there were 420 million mobile users or 43% of the population according to the GSMA's The Mobile Economy. Now, what most of you might probably not know is that Infinix Techno and ITEL are owned by the same company called Transition Holdings. Now, Transition Holdings have been doing business in Africa for a while now, and they have other business ventures in Africa, like Orimo. Orimo is their mobile phone accessories brand. And then they have Scenix. Scenix is their um, home appliances and electronics brand. And then they also have Afmobi, which is their internet service brand strictly for Africa. And they have Calcare, which takes care of um, warranty for all the transition brands in, that are in the market. And so this means like this is almost like saying um, this is the same company, but with different brands, just like Apple have iPhones, iPads and the rest. Now, Transition Holdings was founded by this Chinese guy here called um, George Zhu Zhaojiang. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Transition Holdings started doing business in Africa as far back as 2006. In July of 2006, they launched Techno Telecoms. And in July of the same year, they launched their first phone in Africa that will go ahead to be the Techno T201. Now, in November of 2006, they launched their first dual sim phone in africa that will be the techno t780 which went ahead to change the game of mobile phones in africa in terms of dual sim now in january of 2007 itel mobile was launched following the success of techno now in 2012 they launched infinix mobile following the successful launch of itel mobile and techno mobile there are also some facts that are worthy of knowing about this company now transition have never sold any smartphone in china which is their home country they don't have a single store or outlet in china most chinese don't even know about the transition brands most of them get to find out what tra the transition brands are when they come to africa the transition brands have never made the top 10 smartphones in china in terms of sales or recognition in fact as i said earlier most chinese don't even know about them by 2010 four years after the company was launched business had been going so well that they were ranked number three in sales in africa and in 2014 following the success in africa they decided to expand their business and their empire to latin america the middle east and southeast asia 
Now, since 2010, Transion has been ranked amongst Africa's magazine's top 100 most admired brands in Africa. That is a big deal. And they have sold over 200 million phones so far since they started business. For the first time in over a decade, Transion beat Samsung to become the highest selling mobile phone brand in Africa. And they also beat others like Apple, Huawei, and the other big boys that do business here to become the most admired and most sold phone in Africa. So according to Canalys, in Q1 of 2018, Transion still maintained the lead as the highest selling mobile phone brand in Africa. Now, some of you might say, but Samsung has a 23% market share. How come Transion is winning? Now, if you put together the Transion brands, that is Infinix, Techno, and Itel, it gives you, if you put together their market share, I mean, it gives you about 38% compared to Samsung's 23%. That is why Transion is winning. And in the early days, the, those Transion phones, they really look very ugly. Like, I mean, personally, if you dash it to me for 10 bucks, I wouldn't take it. Then there were those that really felt angry with the phones because, I mean, who wanted to buy that kind of phone when you had the likes of Motorola, Sony Ericsson, as of the time, that were leading the market with better phones. But there were those that just didn't care. At least it still worked. Now, don't forget, as of the time, Nokia was the one that was controlling the market globally from India to Africa to North America to Southeast Asia. Everybody had a Nokia phone, you know. Nokia was the king of the jungle that time, you know. So you, you, it was difficult for most companies to come and do business in Africa or anywhere in the world at of that time and survive when Nokia was in place, you know. And in Q2 of 2009, Estimate put Nokia's market share as of then to 44%. I mean, there were even some Estimates that put it at 50%. Man, that was that was a big monopoly. Can you imagine today Apple controlling 50% of the mobile phone market? That's crazy. And that is what Nokia did by then. And the Symbian OS controls 50% of the OS market as of the time. Beating out BlackBerry, beating out Apple, beating out Android as of the time. And it was just a big deal. And I'm sure most of you might remember this Forbes magazine front page cover of 2007 with the Nokia CEO standing in front with the caption, Nokia 1 billion customers, can anyone catch the cell phone king? And because of their monopoly of the market, the iPhone was just being launched by then. Some of the Nokia CEO laughed and some of them said you can't even do 3G. Some were like, that OS was too terrible to run on a mobile phone. Well, I guess we all know how that ended for them. One of the ways Transion captured the market was in terms of their pricing schemes. I mean, if you're doing business in a continent like Africa, where most of the people don't even make up to $100 a month, some make about 100 some maybe 200 then those that are um, the high income earners will be making maybe 300 to 400 a month. You have to um, come into that price point where there will be something for everybody, where everybody will be able to afford something. You know, so when you come in with phones that are reasonably priced within the income and the budget of the people, then you are going to record great success. Their phones were priced as low as $3 to $8. There were phones that were priced at $5 to $10. There were phones that were priced between $50 and $100. And then there were the big ones that were priced at between $150 to $200. I mean, like, this was a big deal for the African people because it made them happy. I mean, no matter your level of income, you'll be able to afford something, you'll be able to afford a phone, you'll be able to make a phone call. And that was a big deal. So they understood the diversity of the African continent. Now, in Africa is mostly referred to as the land of the rising sun. As our faces are different, so are our problems, so are our people, so as are the regions, so are the geographies, so are the governments, so are the problems, so are a lot of things. So their ability to understand this diversity and work towards it was a deal breaker. Swahili is a language that is mostly spoken in Eastern Africa. It is estimated that about 5 million people speak Swahili as a native language and a further 135 million speak it as a second language. So understanding this, they produce phones that um, came in local Swahili language. So those um, local Africans that couldn't speak English had the opportunity to use a phone that was written in their own native languages. Further down in West Africa, Nigeria is one of the most populous black nations in the world. And they have three major ethnic groups, that is the Igbos, the Yorubas, and the Hausas. And phones were released in these local languages. Further down in other countries like Ethiopia, phones were released in the local Amharic language, the Tigrinya, the Oromo languages, which enabled the locals that couldn't speak English or read English to use mobile phones conveniently. One of the biggest challenges in West Africa is that of electricity, particularly in countries like Nigeria with very heavy epileptic power supply. 
Now, in order to tackle these issues, they released phones that had as much as 5,000 milliampage of battery. I mean, this phone could go as much as two days without charging, and it could also charge another device at the same time. So this was this was what the people had been looking for. One of the problems they had with Samsung and Apple and stuff is that the batteries were never good enough. So most times, if you have an iPhone or you have a Samsung phone, you have to go charging, charging, charging. But with the Techno L8 and L9, these phones could go for days without charging. But in East Africa, the challenges here, they are quite different. You see, the people from this region are always very dark skin or very black in nature. So what happens is that when they take selfies, with iPhones or Samsungs, it's a bit challenging because the selfies are not really that sharp. So in order to tackle this issue, Transion came up with the Techno Camon series. This phone is famous for its whooping 16 megapixel front facing camera that took high quality selfies. And this has actually made a lot of East Africans and Africa as a whole happy. I mean, like I've seen a lot of people that use the Techno Camon series and one, anytime you ask them what is special about this your phone, what do you like most about this your Techno Camon phone? And what they are going to tell you is that I like the phone because the pictures are very bright. It takes high quality selfies. In an interview with Forbes magazine, CEO of Techno Stephen Ha said, the smartphone uses a smart sensor composed of 16 megapixel sensors in the front camera coupled with the unique 4-in-1 technology. Each pixel detects light, captures individual images, and converts the information into the signal before forming the final image, resulting in selfies that are 30% brighter, capturing special moments perfectly. The 4-in-1 technology also pairs effective denoising technology, obtaining a signal to noise 1.7 times better, with the newest smartphone denoise technology to produce amazingly clear images in low light. Now, in case you don't understand what he's saying there, in case the grammar is too big for you, he's simply saying that the phone can take better selfies. <laughs> Young Africans love to listen to music too. And in order to capture this appetite, they had to come up with the Techno Boom series. Now, the Boom series is famous for its high quality audio and video production. Now, as you're buying the phone straight out of the box, you'll get these big premium headphones, which you can use to start listening to your music right away. And you're getting this headphone with inside the box and the phone itself for about 120 to 130 US dollars, which was a very big deal breaker. So they also started their own music streaming service for Africa, which is called Boom Music, just like Spotify and Apple Music, where you can search for your favorite music around the world and you can buy it in your local currency and it's far far cheaper than buying it on apple or on spotify so all the techno phones that come come with the boom player pre-installed now through the boom player you can access the boom music service and also local artists who couldn't afford to put their music on the itunes music service or spotify or other major streaming um, services in europe and america could just easily upload their music into the techno boom music service and the music will be sold locally and whatever comes out of it they get a percentage and transition also gets a percentage of it though there's been reports that the boom music service is not as excellent as it sounds or as they make it sound um, well but we believe that as time goes on it will be improved upon so let's talk about the hardware and software designs of these devices here. Now most of them always come with MediaTek processors and Mali GPUs, which is the reason why the devices are quite cheap, because you can't put in a Snapdragon 845 on this kind of device and expect it to be cheap. And also the physical design, even though the phones are made from plastic, they, they, they do a good job of designing the bodies very well. So it, give the, it gives the customer this premium feels whenever they buy them, whenever they hold them. I mean, for somebody that can't afford an iPhone or Beats headphone, having a Techno uh, Common or a Techno, any of the Techno series or Infinix or iTel that has that, gives you that premium feel when you're holding it, is really awesome. Now, with the recent adoption of the notch on the new Infinix Hot S3X, it's also a deal breaker for the people because since Apple started the notch thing on the iPhone 10, almost every company, LG, Huawei, Oppo, have adopted the notch. And with the dual camera setup on the back of this phone and every other thing, Techno refused to be left out. Most people have also argued that these phones are made from very cheap materials. Yes, that's quite true. But the truth about it is that the people who are the consumers don't really care about these things. They just want something that works. So whether it's made from plastic or it's made from wood, they don't care. The point is that the phone works. So let's talk about the marketing here. And in my opinion, 
the marketing strategy that this company employed was the reason for their biggest success in Africa. Africa does not have a central retail system like they do in Europe and America. The local vendors are usually the ones that handle market penetration and distribution of goods to any length you want. So if you can come up with a, uh, a pattern or the ability to work with these local vendors that might not be as organized as a, as a central retail system, then that is a recipe for greatness and a recipe for success. And of course, Transition was able to come up with a pattern to work with these people. And they didn't just work with them, they also rewarded them for distributing their products. So every single Infinix phone, Techno phone or iTel that was sold, the vendor that sold them got a reward which is like a sort of an incentive per piece of device that also made the people happy and stimulated growth very fast so what they would do is they would approach shop owners and offer to brand the shops or brand the person's showroom and then they'll be paying the person annually so this strategy has worked so much that if you go to any business district now that deals with maybe tech mostly almost everywhere will be will be branded blue so almost every shop you enter, sometimes some of the shops you think Techno owns the shop or Infinix owns the shop or ITEL owns the shop. And they will regularly organize shows in campuses and on the streets, in, in schools, both primary and secondary schools, and bring in local artists that are very popular, for instance, to come and perform for the people. And they will organize competitions and organize um, a lot of things like that. And winners will get prizes. Some of them will even get scholarships. And so it now gives the user the idea that Techno loves me, Infinix loves me, and there is this connection between the people and the brand. So it's not just about selling the phones people are buying. They try to create a connection with the people that buy these phones. They know a lot of African youth to watch English football. So what they did was they went to England, strike the deal with Manchester City to become their brand ambassador in Africa. So these days, wherever you turn, you're going to see big billboards with the Manchester City stars like Kuhn Aguero, David De Bruyne, and the rest of them. You know, so it now gives the, the, the customer this idea that Techno is not just a local brand, it's international, you know. And they also have this special department that handles publicity. Everywhere you go on the street, you're going to see them dancing, playing music, doing giveaways, interacting with the people, showing off their new phones. And all of this also makes the users happy. And they do all of this on a daily basis. There is not a single day that you go on a busy business district or a busy tech market that you won't see them on the streets displaying. So this is how much you can take for today guys. So let me know in the comments if you would like to see a part 2 of this video. And please if you have any questions or you think I omitted anything, please let me know in the comments alright. So don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe okay. Thank you so much. See you again next time.